Alright. Hey, Father God, thank you for blessing us to gather here once more, Lord. And now, Father God, as we go into a lesson portion of these two videos we're recording on tonight, Lord, once more, we both pray that you make us invisible, God. Use us both as instruments, as empty vessels, God, to pour out your heart through us, Lord. Lord, we both decrease so that you may increase. God, I'm asking that you will have your way through this. And I'm praying, God, that you will open hearts, that whoever listens to this video, Father God, will receive a word from you. Lord, we're both human in our carnal minds, so we're just both leaning on to you to use us. It's in Jesus' name we pray, Lord. Amen. Amen. Welcome back. Oh, what's the camera look so weird? Hey, guys, if I yawn a lot during this, it's because Homeboy decided to come over to my house at currently 9 p.m. Okay, first of all, sir, I, I'm just, kidding. I I just drove back I two and a half hours from Austin, Texas. Yeah. Okay, see, this is it. Now we're actually up to date. I was gone this weekend. Oh, yeah, we are. He was supposed to go with me. <laughs> Anyways. It's all right. I had a fun weekend. Yeah, no, he had an amazing weekend. Yeah. Yeah. But, so, quick disclaimer. <laughs> Forget anything else. We are filming two episodes tonight. Okay? That's why. It's so, y'all see these outfits that we have on now? Next week. We're going to have them on next week. Because we filmed two episodes tonight, all right? I see y'all judging us in the comments. Mm -hmm. Stop it right now, all right? But I'm um, poking with this toothpick. Yeah, that was aggressive. You know what this toothpick is from? Take a nice long look. It's a chopstick. No, it's a toothpick. That's a, that's a chopstick, bro. It's a toothpick. It's a chopstick. I promise you this is a toothpick. It's a chopstick. All right, you don't know where it's from? What? You know where we in Texas Roadhouse? Yeah. That's this toothpick. I put it in my pocket. Completely forgot about it. This man stealing then toothpicks from Texas. Then I went to wash my house. pants today. And I stuck my hand in my pockets. This man. And this stabbed me. This man stealing tech. Oh, how's the camera look so weird? Can y'all see it? No, they're, they're goaded with the sauce. They got the good angles. Of my toes. My grippers aren't out today, guys. I blessed y'all without the grippers. There you go. Now they can see us. All right. They got the groupers once, and they never pull them back out again. <laughs> but anyways, what we're it's your topic about, today, sir. So what, go ahead and um, what we're talking about today is uh, this is one of my topics, and it's how God rewards you. And I feel like since we, I, it was weird because after we like had recorded the episode that we're putting up after this week, so on the fifteenth. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> the like everything that was on my phone start flicking in on my head, literally right off the top. So everything that we have been talking to you on the past few weeks, I feel like we've been coming for y'all's throat. Yeah. So this one is more laid back, and we're not going to be attacking y'all. This is just nice. Y'all could listen. Oh, I'm, I'm no promises. And I'm no not promises. Gonna attack you. No, he so. won't. No promises. I won't. But we'll see. Well, yeah, <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, I, I can promise you that I'm not going to attack you. I'm just gonna. Tell y'all what some of these gifts are that God gives you and how you get them. Or basically, that was my first segue. Yeah, now I'm reading through these verses. Well, Go ahead. Anyways, what I was going to say was how God rewards you is basically what we've talked about, like how we've come for y'all throat. If you want God's rewards, do go back, listen to what. We've talked about the ones where we've come for your throats on what you need to do, like to be a Christian once you're there, being a Christian, and how to get God's rewards. Don't worry about it. You're being sketchy. Don't worry about it. He's being sketchy. Don't worry about it. So basically, that's what I was going to say. Go watch the ones where we come for your throats, and then come back to this one to be caught up to date, where we're going to, I'm going to tell y'all what God's gifts are. And then he is going to read some verses because my phone is downstairs and I left my charger in my mom's car and it's going to die. And I didn't have, I had, I had verses on there, but then I just asked my boy Danzel to, Hey bro, like pull it together. Like, come on. And that's what he did. He whipped up some messages for me for y'all to give. And, um, yeah, we're just going to flow. So the first one that I think I had written down and want to talk about, um, is like the we've talked about hope before right yes it was like the second one we did together yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. we talked about hope um and then in that video i mentioned love and faith yeah yep 
and those are all gifts from God that us people, I don't feel like we deserve, but we have. Well, let me just say this: we don't deserve everything. Everything that everything I, is a gift. Everything, everything, is, every, is, a everything gift. is a gift. So, but you could just we could end the video there, but we're not going to. I'm just going to label the main things or big things that I feel like us Christians may glance over twice and don't really look as a gift. And those are three that I want to talk about: faith, love, hope. Um, I, there's grace. That we just that yeah, you we just, just spoke on about. that you just talked about um, forgiveness. Um, there's like all the words that you've heard that come from God. All those. I mean, you really think about it. Words are good too. And all those and those words of, I guess, empowerment or things that you've heard Jesus labeled as. Those are all gifts that we. Um, have gone and have received and um we don't deserve them that's why they're gifts like if i gave Danzel a gift well i guess depend on who you ask i'd say he deserves it but uh this guy but no really truly the and one of the main ones that i wanted to talk about and i'll just jump straight into this what do you think like the main gift that i feel like us christians we look over I want to. I do want to say this. Like the ultimate, the one of the 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 ultimate gift that Jesus gave us was the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I do want to say that the Holy Spirit is a gift that Jesus he gives tells us in the Gospels and um John. I'm pretty sure he tells us that, but that's like the main gift that Jesus gives us is the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. But um, what was your question again? What do you feel like is the main gift, or not the main? Because obviously, yeah. but what do you feel like is the main gift? That us as Christians look like look like glance over it. Honestly, bro, the cross. Okay, interesting. I feel like we, myself included, I feel like we take it for granted too much. Okay. I wasn't going there, but that's a good one. I was because I we all know that yeah, Jesus died for us, and mm -hmm. like we all we all know that's like our that's why we're here. Mm -hmm. But it's like I feel like we take it for granted way too much. Yeah. So like the I feel like we take the gift of the cross for granted way too much. Yeah, I, that wasn't where we were going, but the Holy no, Spirit just gave me that. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. No, that was a good one. I was the Holy Spirit. I, like I know where we're finna head, but was like good, that's like, a good segue though because of what I was what I was gonna say. I feel like we forget that the Holy Spirit. Um, I mean, pff, but obviously the Holy Spirit is a gift too. But um, Jesus, the, the 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 gift of the cross. We, I feel like daily we take it for granted. Mm -hmm. It's because I feel like. The cross is the main reason we're here right now. Mm -hmm. So it's um like why are we taking that for granted yeah. daily? So thank you, Holy Spirit. I was I, I was gonna say one getting into heaven. I feel like that's one of the one of the biggest gifts that we look. That's over. tied to the cross. That's but then yeah. I realized as you were speaking, there's one that I feel like that's way more important than that. And it was like I think it's because how do we get there? with jesus with him himself and i feel like that's Dude, the biggest yes. gift yes. we look over and that's something it's god has him himself that's something god has sat me down and reminded me like this year is jesus is the gift that the world isn't the gift mm -hmm. none of this materialist stuff jesus is the gift so we should because be full with him all those other things that i mentioned come from him exactly they come from him so he, he is the gift. So if you hear someone saying, oh, we get all these gifts from God, ask him what the main gift is. Ask him what, 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 what are you missing though? What's like the Thank bigger, you, Holy Spirit. I mean, bro, picture? we all, bro, we, we, bro, us as Christians love John. Thank you, Holy Spirit. John 316. <laughs> we John love it. 316. For this is how God, um, this is the NLT version. For this is how God loved the world. He gave as one and only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Jesus was the gift that God gave us so we can have eternal life with him. We love quoting that scripture. We love it. Even non-believers say it. Mm -hmm. But it's like, what does that actually mean? It's like, that's that's our gift. It's G Jesus is the gift. So it's like, yeah, God may give you all these other things, but like ultimately, we got to remember that the gift was the cross. The gift was Jesus. Mm -hmm. 
And if that doesn't, if that isn't enough for you, I don't know what is. Yeah. Because that's something God, God reminds me a lot is that if he does nothing else for me, Jesus is enough. Yeah. Jesus was enough. The cross was enough. Yeah. Nothing else. But. And I feel like I'm off topic because I mentioned. We was went like a different I, way. I was going to say how. Oh, I no, was we're ex- on topic of what I was just talking I about. I was. So when you told me find Bible verses, I thought about something else. But um, we ended up here. But no. I, Thank I, you, Holy Spirit. What I was going to say was I, at the beginning, mentioned how do we get these gifts. But we've already talked about how to get Jesus into your life. So I want to. And we've already talked about hope. So now I'm kind of like in this. Stuck in between a hard place on, like, because I could go on and on about all the different gifts and how how you get them. So let's just pretend I didn't say that, and we'll save that for another time because there's like all these gifts that you get, and we'll talk about the main one that I wanted to talk about or go to um, was heaven. Like how how do we get there? Well, Jesus, and what people say that it's like okay. What is that? This is what I always tell people, right? None of us, I've mentioned this, I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this every single time on a podcast episode. None of us. Eternal life, I guess, is the word. None of us deserves, like, heaven. Yeah. None of us deserve eternal life. That's like one of the biggest gifts I feel like us as Christians look over and they say, oh, well, I'm going to go to heaven. I I have eternal life. And here's a little. Like, what does that mean? Like, do you know what that means? Like, Honestly, that means like your cup, like you've been sealed with the blood of Christ. Um, thank you, Holy Spirit. For example, um, some of y'all may not know it. I'm gonna give you a little Bible study lesson right quick. Um, in Exodus, um, the Passover with uh, some of y'all may be familiar with it when with with the blood of the Lamb covering the doors. That is resembling to how those who are gonna be covered in the blood of Christ are the ones who are gonna be saved. And so that's how you get in heaven is by accepting Christ in your heart. And being covered with his blood. Now it's through his blood for us saved. So that's literally the rundown of the gospel is repent from your sins and accept Lord Jesus as Lord of your life. And you are saved. But you gotta declare him Lord of your life. And I feel like that's a big thing people look over the the Lordship of Christ. Cause I posted it on my TikTok is I'll do it, I'm telling you, I'll I'll be posting know, on TikTok. Y'all tune in, bro. Tune in. But it's like Jesus, Plus, Jesus is everybody. Not, Jesus is everybody's savior, but he isn't everybody's lord. Yeah. So when people be like, "Oh, Jesus died for my sins," but is he lord though? Jesus is my savior, but is he lord though? Yes. Like, it does he have lordship? Does he have lordship over your life? Have you relinquished control to him? Yes. Have you submitted to him yet? Yeah. That's it. <laughs> yeah. No, I I literally. So it's like I, when better. it comes to like how do you get in heaven? It's like declaring him lord over your life, but it comes back to realizing that. What does that mean? No, we don't work our way to heaven. Mm-hmm. It's through accepting him. Like, accepting him, we get to heaven and declaring him a little life and repenting. We don't, we aren't saved by works. We don't, like I said, we don't, religion, religion says work your way to heaven. Mm-hmm. That's, that's religion. But Jesus says, no, follow me. Jesus literally says, "Um, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through me. Mm-hmm. So it's like you generally just gotta like follow him, become a disciple, repent, and everything. Yeah. And something that just hit me is like you might be wondering like why 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 is this like important or why why is this important for you to tell us or to teach us and whatever is because for uh, for me at least is I know. How much God loves each and every one, like everybody, like loves us all, all the death. And we've already mentioned this. Like it'd be messed up for us not to tell y'all, hey, like there's this person that loves y'all so much and will give you eternal life if you follow him. And I, from one person to another, I love y'all and I want to. Make sure I see y'all there. So that's why I wanted to touch again on this because we talked about this not too long ago. And this is something else that triggered a why the gifts or or how God rewards us. And let's, um, I got another with the rewards part. I just just read it last night. Mm -hmm. But, um, let's say that you know all this, like, you know, the gospel and everything. But it's one thing to know. It's another thing to apply it. 
Mm-hmm. So as much as you, it doesn't matter how much scripture you know, is scripture being applied to your life? Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter how much of the gospel you know. It, are you applying the gospel to your life? Is the gospel in your heart? Are you are you living that sold out life for Christ? Are you, are you sold out for Christ? Just because you know a lot doesn't mean you're actually applying it. And yeah, that's what is this guy doing? Bro, something was poking me in my shoe. But um, as he looks for that, when it comes to the reward part, though, oh, something something I have to say about that. There's something else that I wanted to talk about was with the rewards is um that the vid- the video that comes up the week after this I mentioned the temptation and I gave y'all an analogy of my hand and I'll I'm not gonna do that right now because I want y'all to go and watch that. But is after you turn down something, it's crazy the God notices that and he want he likes to reward us and he will reward you. So let's say you turn down I don't know. Let's let's like a good All right. Let's say Okay, I got one for y'all. Let's say my boy Danzel here came to me and he was like Hey Logan, like um or actually, hold on. Let's say someone came to me and told me something about Danzel. And they were like, but you can't tell them. Like, don't tell them. That's weird. Like, don't. Like, you can't. Like, don't say anything. But I was in my head. I'm like, oh, like, I, like, I get, like, okay, I'll just lie to him. Like, I just, I guess I won't tell him. But then I just confess and tell him everything. I'm like, hey, so-and-so said. He hates your shoes and blah blah blah, whatever. And these are pretty dirty and you get to know one. <laughs> That's I crazy. Lie, these, I need to get That's to know crazy. One. God will recognize the fact that I didn't lie, that I made the harder choice, that I did whatever. And he'll reward you in some way. It may be small. It no, may be bro, big, perfect. Because but... it says it right here. I literally just read this. Um Paul says it in um First Corinthians three. I'm gonna read it to you. First Corinthians three starting at verse uh twelve. Anyone, NLT version, anyone who builds on that foundation, Jesus Christ, that's the foundation, mm-hmm. may use a very may use a variety of materials, gold, silver, jewels, wood, hay, or straw. Verse 13. But on the judge but on judgment day, fire will reveal what kind of work each builder has done. The fire will show if a person's work has any value. Verse 14. If the work survives, that builder will receive a reward, but if the works is burned up, the builder will suffer great loss. The builder will be saved, but like someone barely escaping through a wall of flames. So, when it comes to the reward part, right? Paul is telling us right here is that our reward is in heaven. And that's something God has reminded me of. It's something I need to do a way better job of. It's remembering that. It's storing our treasures up in heaven. Because ultimately, that's our home. It's heaven. I don't know what verse it is about heart, but it's like, store your treasures up in heaven. And that's where our reward is, is heaven. But we get our rewards in heaven. But when it comes to like doing the work part that God will reward you is something God revealed to me when I was reading this is when you're working for God's kingdom and let's say like the story you just gave, mm-hmm. if you do that with the wrong heart posture, you're not going to get a reward for that Mm-mm. because then you're doing it for your own benefit, not yeah. God's glory. So it's something God was showing me is that, yes, we're going to receive reward from heaven, but... If you're not doing work for God's kingdom, yeah, you will be saved. But Paul says it right here is that um, in verse 15, but if the work is burned up, the builder will suffer great loss. The builder will be saved, but it's like someone barely escaping through a wall of flames. So it's like when say you're working and you're working towards a, towards to receive or, or, or words, reward in heaven, but you're doing it out of the wrong heart posture. So say you're evangelizing, you're doing all this other stuff and you're saved. But if it's for your own benefit and for your own glory, that's when the problem happens because now you're working for God in vain. And then, yeah, but God, God is that you will be rewarded. Like, you will receive a reward if you're working at the right heart posture. Yeah. That's what, it was 1 Corinthians 3, verses 12 through 15. Yes. I, I just read that, like, last night. This yes. Weekend, so. Yeah. Yes. This guy. No, I, what, something else that I... 
More is that bris? I saw that now. pillow at the corner of my eye. I thought someone was peeking around the edge, and that kind of scared me. Where does he say store your treasures but, in heaven? <laughs> Not what, you, what I was going to say was that. I'm trying to think. What was like a good example in my life I could give that? Store your treasures up heaven. I'm not, yeah, we're not saying God won't reward you here on earth. Yeah, yeah. But what, like, what we are saying is that, well, what I'm saying, well, both of us, but yeah. is that we should constantly be reminded that ultimately our reward is heaven. Our reward is eternal life. Our reward mm -hmm. is Christ. And that's where we should be storing our treasures up is heaven, not this earth. Mm -hmm. So it's like, even though you may gain here on this earth, everything you gain on this earth is only temporary. Heaven is eternal. So mm -hmm. we need to keep that keep our mind on that like for instance like if if like you're struggling with we've both been there like lust and like struggling with um women and you yeah, know yeah man. yeah and you cut you overcome that right and you overcome that you heal from that that's right you, then you'll God will reward you. I mean, he's always had the one picked out for you, but he'll he'll humble you. He'll make sure he'll take everything away from you. And because, at least for me, whenever I was there, I never felt good about any of it. I'm pretty sure like, we all never did. Yeah. So now it's, I humble. It's not, you know, and if it, I'd get so worked up and now it's just like, calm and yeah. it's just it's 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 not like oh that's a great segue to like what i thought we were going to hit on when it comes to like receiving earthly things like earth earthly gifts from god yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what i was going to segue into like that's why i like the verses i originally mm -hmm. mentioned Six, and then the holy spirit just took that to a whole different um <laughs> well originally yeah that's i had both earthly and not earthly but well, I mean, the most important one is not um, earthly and that's it's why I Christ. Wanted, that's why i talked about yeah heaven. it's because like we need to internal life because cool, like i don't know where it's at my heart but jesus literally says store your treasures up in heaven and we need to be doing that is mm -hmm. look at paul paul is a perfect example is paul cared nothing about his earthly gain oh only thing Paul cared about was advancing God's kingdom, and Paul's going to receive a reward for that in heaven. And that's what we need to be reminded of, is that the crown that we lay at Jesus' feet is our reward. And he will receive that from, from the, we will receive that. So I just want to remind you of the verse, I don't know where it's at, but it's like, what Jesus says, store your treasures up in heaven. We need to keep constantly doing that. Something God always reminds, something God needs to, something I need to start doing a lot more to remind myself of that. Mm -hmm. But now we want to say to like the earthly things God gives you, like, like answering a prayer and everything. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Do you have a verse you want to do? Those were the verses I was going to hit on. Oh. When you first said it, the Holy Spirit took it to a different thing. Yeah. Hit him. Well, when it comes to like when God giving you like gifts like outside of like heaven and everything, like, but like, say you've been praying for something and you've been wanting something and God, God rewards you. God's like, all right, here, I'm going to give it to you. Mm -hmm. Um, I think a lot of people, uh, where's i gonna go with that i think a lot of people expect it to be like you pray for something and then it happens overnight mm -hmm. but we don't realize what we talked about last week is that just because you're praying in faith you still have some things to do yourself to do mm -hmm. because god isn't just gonna drop it on you yeah and did i talk i talked about this last episode when you're together it's like how when you're praying for something god's got to prepare you for it and mm -hmm. all that and that still applies it's like you got like the training wheels on your yeah. bike. That's what I said. But when it comes to that, say you're praying for something, you ask for something. Um, I'll I'll look to these verses when Logan asked me. Um, I'm gonna start at verse. Yeah, this is Matthew seven, starting at verse seven. Um, keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open. So uh, many of us pray that prayer one time, like God, I want this, and then done. Jesus tells us right here that to keep on asking, pray like as it says, it's the verse "pray without ceasing." You need to keep on praying, keep on seeking God for it, keep on asking Him for it. I'm gonna keep on reading it. So, verse eight: For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and to everyone who knocks, the door will be open. So, like this is layout. You're asking for it, right? And you you're gonna receive it, but there's some parts to do. You got you got to seek it out. You got to find it. Um, did I mention this? Like, did I? 
I'm gonna say it on this one too. God will open the door for you, but it's oh, up yeah. to you to step through it. I think I said the last one. I'm gonna say it this oh, one too. You said, you said, yeah, because it's such a time. fire quote. But when it comes to this, is we gotta recognize that God will open the door for us, but it's up to you to walk oh, through it. I love Matthew. Matthew's so good. God's not gonna force you to walk through the door. So, say you've been praying for something, praying for something, right? And that door opens. Now that the door is open, God's not gonna force you to walk through it. It's up to you to walk through it. So just because God opened the door doesn't mean you've received it. You gotta walk through the door. But on verse nine, this is the part where it gets on. As you parents, if your children ask for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone in instead? Or if they ask for a fish, do you give them a snake? Of course not. Verse eleven. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good gifts to those who ask Him? As we're hitting on the uh, the episode next week that you're going to see is God is a Father. He enjoys giving us things. He enjoys giving us things that we may receive. But something God has shown me is that we can't receive nothing if we're not oh, asking. Okay, I, you said next week. I was like. Yeah. Okay, I guess. You know. But something I was showing me is like we can't receive nothing if we're not asking mm -hmm. God for it. Yeah. I'm not saying don't please. I'm not saying don't let that be the only thing your prayers. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we hit on that before. Our prayers should not be consist of what you want. The prayers of a righteous person. <laughs> but it righteous. what it, what it should be is say you're desiring something right. Bring that desire to God, because God loves us and God cares for us. And he's a father. So if he's our father, he has our best interest of heart. Like he, he knows what we need. He like he's a, he's gonna give us what we need. Like so he has our the best interest at heart. You gotta recognize that. But we can't receive nothing if we not so like say like I asked Logan for the toothpick. I'm not gonna get it if I don't ask for it. He ain't gonna get it if he asks for it. I'm just kidding. He, but, he's gonna get it. But that's what happens sometimes. But still, like when God says no, he doesn't for Oh no, when yeah. he when he says no, that. But it's like he is my friend. Say like I say like I wanted that toothpick from Logan's hand right now. Mm -hmm. If I don't ask for it, I'm not gonna get it. So it's when when you're wanting a gift from God, instead of just constantly thinking on and thinking on and thinking on it, just simply ask. Simply ask, and that's something God has taught me here recently. Is like. God is reminding me that he is a father. I hit on the next week, next week's episode too, but he's a father. Just simply ask him and he will give mm -hmm. it to us. That's all we got to do is ask and he will give. And I feel like something else kind of like with the toothpick analogy is like he could he could try to take it and like grab it Thank you. and pull it. You see how he has it? But and he did it by himself. He didn't have to ask. But don't you see how I still have a grasp on it? Oh, I still have the grasp. Oh, so he's oh. he. So it's like, it's a, no. if you ask, he's gonna give you all of it. But so, if you don't ask, you just have this much. You weren't. Supposed oh, to, yeah. I was gonna give it to you because I thought oh, you were. But, ask, but if you're but, not asking, you don't have this yeah, you much. Don't, you, yeah. you don't have it. Yeah, you, you don't. don't have and it. The other thing still has a grasp on it. And there was a point in my life where the I was I grabbed on to a girlfriend and I didn't ask and guess what? I didn't have that I didn't have that connection that was healthy and whatever. Whatever the whatever the problem was, that was there was a problem because I didn't ask. And we both held on to the toothpick and we both were struggling. But if I was to pray about it and ask and ask and ask, eventually I'd have it and I wouldn't have to be struggling no more. Yeah. And like we said before, God, okay, disclaimer, like I said before, God isn't obligated to give you everything you ask for. It says right here, he's going to give you what you need, mm -hmm. but he's going to give you gifts at times. But see, like, if you're asking for something, you got to sh show... If you're asking for something, right, and you do nothing to get to it, why would God give it to you? Like, are you are you prepared for what you're asking for? And that's something God has taught me early is like, when I ask for something, he's going to have, you got to be prepared for it too. I mentioned that last week's episode or two weeks ago, I mean, Logan, which leads me to this verse in um, Jink, while you're, while I'm talking, I'm trying. Uh, Christ is my firm foundation. This man said praise break. Yeah, 
Let's man hit that right. Rain, rain came. Uh, James, James three. I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, is it James three? I still can't believe I have this bracelet on. That's crazy. By the time it's, I haven't worn mine in like two weeks. Dude, I've before. worn these bracelets from camp. I, I got this one last year. Wow, this is crazy to think about. I've worn these bracelets for two there, years. Oh, dang, man. Anyways. James 4, when we said ask, right? Mm -hmm. This comes like God's not obligated to give you everything. Like we said before, when you're asking God, always be reminded if it's in your will. But, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Ooh. Something God has shown me when it comes to putting the faith aspect of it is I've, and I, God, I, can, I got convicted of this before. God convicted me of this recently is us as followers oh. always be like, yeah. we'd be like, hey, God, I want this thing. I desire this thing. But I recognize if it's in your will, and there's nothing wrong with that. That is the best. That's a great prayer to pray. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to faith, many of us use that as a pillow. Uh, to like if it doesn't happen we're like bet that wasn't your will but god would show me it's like bro where is your faith at and, and like i seen i seen this tiktok um ali yost if you're watching this thank you for that thank you for that she's Ooh. like she, she's a pretty she's pretty popular if she's on my 40 page ali yost but god convicted me of that because it was like so we always say like i'm not saying this yes we should your will be done not mine that's mm -hmm. that's it's in the lord's prayers remember that but when we're asking for something, we always say, all right, God, I desire this thing. I want this thing. But if it's in your will, if it's not in your will, remove it. We use that as a pillow because God's like, where's your faith at? I, I want to give you this thing. But you, you saying that's like a pillow is like, oh, I'm not going to do nothing. So it's like when we say that, it's like we don't have that radical faith that we're supposed to have. So it's like you said, when you, when we, we're supposed to be asking in faith, believing in faith. But don't just sit there. Why is God going to reward you for being lazy? God, being being lazy is a sin. I want you to know that. <laughs> like, it's literally a sin. So God's not going to reward you for being lazy. You're going to have to work towards the thing you're asking for. He's going to work with you. He's not gonna, that's why we have the Holy Spirit to help us. But ultimately, like, we need to be taking those steps. And then God will take those hundred steps more. But yeah. You know what you want to say? I'm trying to think. Because I, 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 I love to this verse. Um... In James 4, when it says this, in James 4, starting at verse 2, you want, what, you want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill to get it. You are jealous of what others have, but you can't get it, so you fight and wage war to take it from them. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. Yeah. James 4, verse 2, yet you don't have what you want because you don't have ask God for it. And that's something God was showing me. It's like, at, at, he's a father. God, guys, he's a father. He wants to give us things for us to like receive. But you can't receive something from God if you're not asking him for it. Yeah. Like, we just give you an analogy. How do you expect to receive something if he's not going to ask? Yeah. But, and literally, when he's talking about war and stuff, like, we could fight over this all day. And at the end of the day, if he walks away with it, guess what? You think that's going to. Leave me happy? No, I'm going to go back. And exactly. guess what? That's going to ruin his mood, even if he has the thing. And this is just going to cause torture. Unless it's handed to him by the one man that he prayed to and asked for and was like, God, please. Then it's or, his and it's hear me righteous. Out. And hear it's... me out. If, let's say we're both Christians, right? Mm -hmm. I pray for one. You pray for one. We both have one. Yeah. Bang. Boom. <laughs> Here, <laughs> but we, have this if we don't, like, If we don't ask, though, how do you expect to... Like, if we're not asking God for something, how do you expect to receive from him if you're not asking? I'm not, like I said, please mm -hmm. don't let, I do not want you to think you should only be praying for things that you want. No. Yeah. But something God has shown me here recently. Remember, we literally had just talked about, we forget that the ultimate gift that we were given was Jesus himself. Make sure you thank him whenever you pray. Every time. That's what I'm saying. But like, yeah, yeah, for real. But it's like, like I'm saying, it's like, we shouldn't no, god has shown me personally me personally that he's still a father mm -hmm. like he is still has fathership over us yeah. and he wants to give us things yeah. 
But um, I'm continuing to read James 4, um, starting at verse 3. And even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what you will, what, what you, you want only what will give you pleasure. I'm going to read that again. <laughs> it's like you don't catch it. James 4 verse 3. And even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure, which comes back to our point that we made with um the first Corinthians verse is when you're asking God for something, is it for his glory mm-hmm. or is it for your own benefit? Well, See, be, be cognizant of that. Mm-hmm. So something I like to do for me personally is like before I even ask God for something, it's like, okay, how will this glorify God? Mm-hmm. How will this advance God's kingdom? Mm-hmm. How can how can God get the glory out of this? And if I'm like, okay, this is just me being selfish, don't ask for it. But when you if if you ask for something and God knows it's gonna give him glory and advance his kingdom, he's gonna give it to you. Just ask. But don't just ask for selfish things. Like say, um, I want it like a million dollars. God, I want a million dollars. What am I gonna do with that million dollars? Am I gonna spend it on my own benefit or am I gonna try to Am I, am I going to sell in other churches? Am I going to give it to others? I'll give it to homeless. Am I going to like be wise with it? But if you're asking for that million dollars for your own benefit, that's where you're not going to get it. It's because it's for your own pleasure, not for God's glory. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. That's gas. That's how you guys say. That's gas. Do you have any personal experience when? So I can give you one. Like it's literally here recently. Like yeah, I did with like lust and stuff. For me personally. This has showed up a lot in my life over this past month because God has reminded me of his fathership. Mm-hmm. So is now me praying in faith is like, all right, God, want this. This is how I think it can glorify you. I'm thanking you in advance for it. Thank you mm-hmm. for it. And even if you don't, thank you. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah. <laughs> literally, I literally, yeah, I said thank you. Because God. it's like, just thank God, like, help me. And the way it has shown up in my mind is like, I've seen a lot more opportunities and doors open here recently mm-hmm. just for me asking. And that's something I, I used to always never do. It's because some of us, like we talked about this in the small group I was in this past Friday. Uh, <laughs> uh, like, I was True. laughing because of completely yeah. different reasons. So, some, some, of, some of us, um, and this is like a good thing. Like we don't want to ask for ourselves because we don't come off selfish. And like I do it myself too. But it's like, like I said, ultimately God is a father over us all. Mm-hmm. So he wants to give us all things. So like for me personally, it's like me asking God for those things and in faith, like don't ask in vain, ask in faith, bro. Because ultimately we got, re- remember the God you are, remember the God you serve. Bars. He is above all things. Bars. Remember who you are. The ad are crazy. Remember, remember who you are approaching. You are come. The, the Bible says come before the throne of grace boldly mm-hmm. because he is our father, bro. So when you're asking God, know who you're asking. He is the God that controls everything. So just so if you're asking for something and you don't think he's going to do it, but where's your faith? We're supposed to be asking in faith. Because ultimately God will reward you. But you got to be asking in faith. Like I said, God will open the door for you. It's up to you to walk through it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You got anything you want to say? It's crazy that I'll leave them with this. It's crazy that they'll be knocking at that door, and after you open the door to let him in, he's opening the door for you. That's what I'm saying, bro. He's opening the door for you, for you to walk through to, so he can help you with your potential, what you're supposed to do. So, whenever you let him in, he lets you out for him to help you. Because who is the to door? Pursue what you're supposed to do and what you who you're supposed to be. Think about it. Who is the door? He is. He is the he controls the door because he is the Jesus door. Jesus is the door. My point, Jesus literally says that I am the door. He is the door. So when you're knocking and seeking, as Jesus mm-hmm. said in Matthew seven, once you open the door, you realize who the door was. It was him. All you had to do was come to him and ask. The secrets of the universe have been revealed. No, because it's so true. It's like, look at it, bro. 
Jesus is the door. And he says this here in Matthew 7. I'll go back to it. I mean, look at that. Look at that. Mm, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. You finna drop Jesus is the door merch. Matthew, what? <laughs> Matthew 7. Jesus is the door. Matthew 7 right here. Keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. Mm. Everyone who seeks finds. To everyone who knocks, the door will be open. Mm. Who are you seeking? Jesus. And bro, look at this. I, I think this great um is in first, uh, 2819 church. Uh, Philip gave this is the great analogy. When you knock, how do you knock? You don't knock one time, do you? Though mm -mm. it's like, let me in, cause <laughs> something like, hey, it's like, let me in, bro. Like you don't, you don't just. No, like, keep you're... on knocking, bro. Keep on knocking. Keep on praying without ceasing, because that door will open, and once that door open, you will realize. <laughs> yeah, you don't keep knocking. Yeah, and once that door open, you will realize that Jesus is Jesus. the door. He said Jesus. And say like, if it, say if it doesn't get answered Jesus. on your timing. Keep on praying for it, bro. Jesus. Keep keep on praying for it, bro. It's a it's a great it's a great story. I don't know where it's at by heart. I wish I did. I'm thinking about it. Is when um Jesus gives us this story about how there's a lady that kept on begging and begging and begging for something, and eventually the um dude she was begging gave in. That's how it is with us. Mm -hmm. If you keep on asking, you keep on asking. Bye, bye, bye. God God will prepare you for it if it's going to glorify Him. Mm -hmm. But you just gotta ask. Oh yeah. You can't receive something if you don't ask. You won't. Don't be scared to ask. God says, "Come before my." You won't receive. God it. says, "Come before the throne of grace boldly." We are His children. He wants to give us stuff. Just ask. That's something God's taught me recently. But yeah, anything else you want to leave the people with? Because it is late, and dude, it is unbelievably late. It is we started, not fit. We literally started right at. Nine is I would say we were going for like 40 ish so, minutes. I'm gonna pray us out because your boy's getting a little tired. He has to drive back home. Yeah, hey, like I said, bro, YouTube if y'all see us video. next week we'll in the same, it. if y'all see us next week in these same outfits, we, filmed, Tune shirt, jeans. we have filmed two episodes today. In a pair of shoes. You know, it'd be so, yeah. Oh, shoot. come on, no, man. I'm gonna edit out. I'm gonna edit out. I'm gonna edit out. <laughs> I'll edit it out. I'll edit it out. All right. I'll edit it out. I didn't. I didn't say that. Oh shit! Cut. So guys, we're yeah. back. I'm gonna wear this the same same thing a week from whenever. Yeah. The next. You wanna pray this out, watch, man? Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. wear the same thing. All right. Because I'm gonna troll y'all and be called dirty, and I don't really care. Alrighty, here we go. All right, let's go. Hey, awesome God! I just want to thank you for um, getting. Um, Danzel to and from Austin, um, I'm perfectly safe. And I also want to thank you um, for the time you had there, Lord. I want to thank you for the time I had here with the family. I'm spending just quality time, Lord. I just um, I want to thank you for um, gathering us here safely and um, being able to have this platform uh, for you to be able to talk through us and just know that Everyone here is loved not only by us too, but by you, Lord, and that um, this platform isn't for us, but it is for you, and we just thank you, and we can't thank you enough for all these gifts, wonderful, wonderful gifts that you give us, everything, everything that you, literally, the earth, everything on it, um, you, yourself, um, heaven, um, just internal life, Lord, all these amazing things that you have given us the Holy Spirit, love, faith, hope, grace, um, faith. It just, we all, we owe it to you, Lord, and we thank you, and we can't praise you and worship you enough for the things that you have done for us, and um, we love you and we praise you every day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let's go. Um, yeah, bro, just ask. Just ask, but remember, the, the ultimate gift is Christ. The, the saying is literally ask and you shall receive. Yeah. It's not don't ask and won't receive. Yeah, the, but also remember like. Well, that's a good one. The ultimate gift is Christ. So if Christ isn't enough for you, bro, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's that simple. But I mean, it's late. This man finna go to sleep. I got work tomorrow. You don't want to speak. No. You just got to ask. No. <sighs> but um, yeah, we'll s see you guys in three weeks because we're not filming this weekend y'all got but yeah. well, y'all got one though <laughs> so y'all tune in next week too 
tuning in this one. We're doing a stock. We love you guys. We love you guys. We love you. Eight. This is gonna be eighteen. This is gonna be nineteen. Episode twenty. We had something big for so y'all. Wait, this is episode eighteen. Yeah. Yeah, you bought something. What are we gonna? What are we gonna? Oh, for the y'all summer? see for the summer. Oh, we'll see what God has in store. <laughs> Oh, that's gonna be crazy. Y'all but stay um, tuned. yeah, y'all stay tuned. But what God, whatever God takes is, I'm excited to see. Oh, we're gonna have some fun. But um, yeah, we love you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Yeah, I'm gonna go back to solo episodes. Right, Peace. Peace. <laughs>